Hi, I'm Darren. I work at EPIC, the Irish Emigration Museum. We are standing in the 200-year-old vaults of the CHQ building in Dublin's Docklands, where a museum dedicated to Irish emigration has been for the last three years. I was one of the first people to come here when it opened in 2016, so it's great to be working here now in something that I'm really passionate about and love the experience of meeting so many people, both locally and from around the world, who come and visit EPIC. We are expecting some 300,000 people to pass through the doors of this museum to learn about the influence and impact of Irish people abroad this year. People are fascinated by what is in this museum. And it is a museum, as you will see as we go around, that's not quite like other museums. There's a lot of audiovisual elements. There's a lot of projections and film and stories and things you can swipe and swoosh and zoom in on and learn about. So it's not so much about looking at artifacts behind a glass, but about learning and seeing for yourself what it was like to emigrate from Ireland and then the amazing stories of what some of the Irish people around the world did and achieved on a global stage. There are stories here that you will know and faces you will know and then there are stories that you will be telling your friends about when you leave. Imagine knowing that you're leaving Ireland for the last time. The scenery you know, the countryside you love, whether it's the Burren, the Giant's Causeway, the Plains of Kildare, a field in Kilkenny. You are leaving your family and your friends to embark on an epic voyage on a ship, maybe like this. No Wi-Fi, no WhatsApp, a voyage of many, many months. A hard, tough voyage, knowing that you will never see Ireland again, but hopefully you're excited about the life that awaits you. For thousands of years, people have been leaving Ireland in a variety of vessels whether it was the earliest Corox that St. Brendan is reputed to have found America on, right through to the Viking longships, or even the Jeannie Johnston, the ship that's outside Epic on the river. Jeannie Johnston is famous for being the only one that nobody died on board. And the reason that nobody died on board the Jeannie Johnston Vammon ship is that the captain had medical training, he hired a doctor, and he believed in things like having enough food and water for his passengers to survive their journey on, having a doctor on board and going up on deck every day for about 15 minutes of fresh air. Revolutionary at the time and things we take for granted now. So you'll see right behind me the variety of vessels right up to the Boeing planes and the ferries that are leaving from Dublin port of how people have left Ireland. From the earliest times of people living in Ireland, people have left Ireland to go to other places and they would have left from a departure point. We are in the departure room of Epic the Irish Emigration Museum, where you will learn about such stories as the Earl Grey women who were invited to go and populate Australia during the 1800s. Here you'll see an amazing poster advertising for single women or widows of good character to apply for free passage to go to New South Wales because the population of men compared to women was much higher. You'll notice though that the poster says free passage over but not back. Those women, those Irish women, would have been expected to work in servitude as servants, as domestic labour, to pay off their passage and eventually find a husband, settle down and start a family. One of my favourite stories about the Earl Grey women is the young woman who emigrated from the workhouse in Thurles in the 1800s when she was 14, went to Australia on this scheme, uh, stayed there for 10 years working off her debt, met a man, married, had 16 children, and by the time they died, they had an estate of over 2,000 acres of Australian land. So there are reasons that people emigrate. Just like the Canadian National Railways who wanted Irish people to come over and help them build their railways, they would have attracted people to posters like this, which promised people a farm in beautiful farmland, lovely weather, great scenery, we'll give you animals, you'll have fishing, you'll get a tan, it'll be great crack, you'll love it. No mention of the six foot of snow for four months of the year. Always read the fine print in this. I think that this museum is unique. I have never been to another museum like that. Even the topic is unique, Immigration Museum. I really enjoyed it. First of all, because it was very modern, it was digital, interactive, and I had the chance to learn more things about Ireland. 
There's a sign on a seat behind me that says, take a seat and be inspired. And in our discovery and inventing room, we're telling you the stories of some of the inventors, the doctors, the surgeons, the engineers, and the medicine people who have made an impact on the world stage. One of my favorite stories is Dr. James Barry. Dr. James Barry was a military surgeon who was most famous for uh, performing the world's first caesarean section successfully, where both mother and baby lived. When Dr. James Barry got sick uh, and on his deathbed, he left very strict instructions that he be buried in the clothes that he died in. For some reason, those wishes weren't fulfilled and it was discovered that Dr. James Barry was actually a woman, a woman named Margaret Bulkley, who had dressed as a man so that she could get training as a doctor and perform medicine on the battlefield and in operating theatres and just succeed in the field that she wanted to be in. Those are the kind of stories that you learn here. It's the first time that I'm here in Dublin. Um, I really like the people. I think that um, I have traveled in many countries, but Irish people are so friendly, always smiling, always willing to help. And I would like to congratulate the staff of this museum because they were really helpful. They answered all of our questions and they were so happy to help us. So thank you, congratulations. If you look around the walls of this room, you're going to see a lot of faces that you recognise, whether they are Irish and have emigrated or people of Irish heritage. You'll also see some of the biggest news stories of Irish interest that have happened in the last uh, 100 years. Some of them will spark memories, some of them will make you smile. People love testing themselves to see if they can recognise who's on the walls. The guy with the cross and the garlic around his neck, Bram Stoker, born in Dublin, wrote Dracula. The guy with the lightsaber, Liam Neeson, Roy Keane is eating Tato, of course, um, the first flavoured crisps in the world. John O'Keefe discovered that neurons spark in the brain and we had to give Oscar Wilde a selfie stick because you know that if he was alive now, he'd have one. One of the parts of the museum that people really love is finding out about our sports heroes who have made a huge impact on the global sports stage. So, whether it's Johnny Hayes, who was one of the first long distance runners whose parents were from Tipperary, or uh, Geraldine Heaney from Armagh, who is one of Canada's best ice hockey players, to the Ireland 2014 Winter Olympic team, who in Sochi in Russia, who are all members of the diaspora. None of them actually born in Ireland, but represented Ireland in the Winter Olympics. On Culture Night, you'll learn about the influence of Irish music around the world. The artists and architects who have made some of the most beautiful buildings that we know of the storytellers that have inspired and entertained generations. And you'll come to my favorite room just in here. We're in the Whispering Library, where we're talking about the writers and authors and storytellers that have made Ireland famous around the world, where there's lovely stuff that you can do just like this. And find out about the impact of Irish literature around the world. She could get read back. She knew she could. There had never been a man she couldn't get once she set her mind upon him. I think Culture Night is one of my favourite nights of the year. I personally have found out so much about Dublin and so much about Irish culture and history from it. And I'm glad that we're able to be part of it this year because people come with this lovely expectation of experiencing art, of experiencing music. They're happy to find out things that they never knew about. And that's something that Epic is going to be able to give them. For Culture Night, people are going to have a real uh, highlights tour of Epic and see the best bits, hear the best stories, try the best technology, and really get a sense of what the whole museum is about. So I think what Epic will become in a few years is actually what Culture Night is all about, bringing people together to learn, to grow, and to prosper as a community and as a people. <laughs>